Hi, I'm Anne. I'm Elena. And we're from Team 10C, and we're the main documentaries of our team this season. And um, just some background information, we both started doing robotics in seventh grade, and we were on the t- same team since eighth grade, and um, we're both graduating this year. Yeah, so since we're graduating, we wanted to reveal our notebooks and talk about some of the things we've learned along the way through our documentation journey. Um, for, so for some of the qualifications we have to share our notebook, we won the design award in eighth grade in 2019, as well as in 2021 at Worlds. And then at State, we've won excellence in 2021 and 2023, as well as innovate in 2022. And then throughout the regional comps over the years, we've won design, excellence, innovate, etc. cetera, um, numerous times. And we're doing this notebook reveal because we accumulated a lot of feedback and knowledge over our six years of robotics that we want to share with you guys. And also, when we first started, there weren't really a lot of engineering notebook resources, and we wanted to provide this as a resource that you guys can use. Starting off, this is our freshman year notebook. We want to kind of go through all the notebooks throughout the seasons to show you some of the mistakes we made and how we think they can be improved and how you guys can avoid them. So our freshman year notebook, this is a table of contents, and we had very not descriptive names for the meeting, like programming meeting, engineering meeting, and this made it really hard to find specific information. So we recommend making the meeting titles very descriptive. (laughs) So this is an example of one of our meetings. As you can see, we just kind of had like a wall of text and then Um, Although we included images, they're on the next page. So it's kind of hard to tell um, what each of these figures are referring to within the text. And um, within the meetings, we also were extremely specific about what exactly we did. Like we cut C channels instead of kind of analyzing our choices and explaining why we did it. And this is another example of us having a lot of text, which made it really hard to read and having images at the end. So we don't really know what these images are referring to in here. This is our sophomore year notebook. We made a lot of changes this year. um, And we also highly recommend you guys reevaluate your documentation process at the end of each season to see how you can improve moving forward. So this year we had actually like meaningful meeting titles, which made it a lot easier to find different meetings in the table of contents. We also included uh, logs this year. So we have how to read notes and then competition logs, um, online challenges <laughs> logs. Yeah, and then I think the tape we used this year wasn't great, so the images are kind of falling out. But we also had a timeline of robot development. Um, For taping images in, we recommend double-sided tape since it leaves clean edges unlike regular tape so you can write on the side of them. And also glue gets kind of messy sometimes. And then moving on, uh, this year we also included a design process. So we kind of outlined what process we would follow as we went through each design iteration. And this helped frame our notes in a way that made it easy to follow each of our um, iterations for both us and the judges. So you can see the you know, rainbow colors popping up later on. This is an example of a meeting. Um, so as you can see, we did a lot more diagramming and drawings this season and a lot more CAD stuff. And um, as you can see here, and this is very like important since for the virtual year, this is a virtual year, um, documentation was important to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, we made sure we had a lot of images to support our notes. Yeah, and then you can see the design process popping up here. Um, we also used a lot more color this year within the text and also with like highlighters and stuff, which made it easier to find um, you know, n- numerical values that we might be looking for. And this is another example of how we are kind of incorporating images more into the meeting. Um, We recommend having the images more spread throughout the meeting so you can directly see what you're referencing in the text and have more like arrows pointing to different parts of the image. And then this year, while we were in the meetings, we were more conscious of taking pictures every time we made a change so that we could put it into our notebook um, and refer back to it later. 
Moving on to our junior year notebook, this year we focus on using good documentation and project management practices, which is good since um, that's a good thing to practice just in general. So we started using Gantt charts to do more time management and planning, and we also did stuff like signing across images when we paste in. Um, throughout each of our notebooks, we also include a first impressions page that kind of talks about our thoughts as we first um, analyze the game. And we cut out our designs as like kind of a starting point. Uh, and we highly recommend doing this, uh, not just for documentation, but just for um, engineering, um, because it kind of helps you visualize what you're trying to do. We also had a calendar at the start of each month to do even more time management and planning. This year, we also included game manual updates as meetings, which helped us track what was changing and then how we might change our design to um, meet these. Um, and then we also included links in our notebook. And uh, although we don't know if the judges can actually click on the links, they help us personally as a team um, to refer back to the resources we used within each meeting. We also did a lot more code documentation in this notebook. Um, previously, we just had a binder with the code and then we added comments, but that's not very helpful when it comes to actually developing the code, since it's not only should you document your building steps, you also should document the programming aspects. So we made sure to write a lot of comments on like what each part of the code does, so anyone who looks at the notebook will understand what the code means and just more diagramming and explaining the process of developing the code. Finally, this is our notebook for spin up, which is our senior year. Um, this year, we did a lot more color coding with some meetings to make it more visually appealing and visually organized. Yeah, and here's an example of one of our meetings from this year. Um, this year, we decided to focus a lot more collecting uh, quantitative data. So as you can see, um, this is a design matrix, and we added uh, weights this year to kind of quantify what type of scale we were looking at. Um, and additionally, we made a RPM conversion chart um, and included that, which is more like quantitative data with like numbers uh, rather than just talking um, qualitatively. Um, and we also did a lot more like testing using numeric data this time. Um, so we have like trials and time, and we did that throughout the whole season for for the experimentation step. And then this year, instead of having a season Gantt chart and then monthly calendars, we just made monthly Gantt charts, which um, was just made it more organized to see what we were working on. So we make one at the beginning of the year um, or beginning of the month to see what we want to work on. And then we make one at the end to reflect on what we actually did. And this kind of helped us reframe uh, what we wanted to do the next month. In July of the spin-up season, we decided to change to digital documentation. And we did this because we thought it would be easier to collaborate. And we just wanted to try it out. And we decided that we liked it. So this is an example of a meeting in the digital notebook. Um, a good thing about digital documentation is that with the links that we had, we can just directly click on it instead of having to type up the URL each time, which helped us make better use of our documentation. Yeah, and then digital documentation also helped us make uh, diagrams and charts, uh, like this pros and cons chart and this um, controller chart. Yeah, it was just a lot more streamlined this way. Oh, and then, and then another thing that we um, did with our later notebooks is we marked out the pages that we thought were important with um, like sticky notes, um, which helped both us find them and also helped refer the judges to pages that we thought were done especially well. And this is another example of um, diagramming using the digital documentation process. We were able to be a lot more like flexible with the way we document things instead of just having images, you can more easily do diagrams and do like overlays on top of images. And 
uh, this is an example of one of our competition meetings. This is from NorCal. Um, and within our competition meetings, we included, um, th these were skills runs. We talked about each run individually, um, like what worked, what didn't work, things like that. Um, yeah, and having these re links really helps us to refer back to the runs, um, especially for programming skills where we can see exactly what went wrong and things like that. Um, yeah, these are our qualification match notes. Um, we also have a link. We have who our Alliance opponents were, the score, whether we won Auton and whether we won, won the match, and then what went well, what went wrong. And for this what went well, what went wrong, um, we have someone taking a video of the match for each match, and then we will watch them together as a team after the competition, and we'll make a document with what we can improve, and that's what we use to make the analysis for each match. Thank you. So flipping through the meeting. Um, oh, this is Alliance Selection. This kind of talked about uh, what we, what sort of teams we thought were performing well and why we might consider them. And with this season, we focused a lot on analysis since we found that analysis was what was most useful for us in the documentation process. So um, we, for example, we talked about our thoughts on our scouting process at the competition and we like agreed on what we wanted to change as a team moving forward. Now that we've gone through our notebooks, we wanted to share some helpful tips and tricks that we've picked up over the years that might benefit document other documenters. So the first tip is that at its core, your notebook should be something that's helpful to you and your team. In fact, it's very common for engineering notebooks to become something that's solely for awards. But we think it's really important that you format your notebook in a way that's actually helpful to you. Um, and that is why for each season, we often change the ways that we document certain things, as you've seen previously. And sometimes even during the season, we would discuss as a team on like things you want to change and how to better improve um, the way we <coughs> analyze and document things. Our second tip is that the first few pages of your notebook are the most important ones. Even though they're not actual meetings, you need to have pages that tell your team members as well as the judges how to actually read your notebook. So make sure that you set up a table of contents, outline a design process of some sort. It doesn't have to be fancy, but make sure you can help guide other people through your design iterations. Um, and then also summarize the game, talk about you know your thoughts on the game, things like that. And the third tip is to write a summary right after each meeting. Um, sometimes it's not possible to like write the full-fledged entry into the notebook after each meeting, but it's good to at least type up a summary for each meeting, even if it's just like a paragraph of text that kind of goes over what you did, what needs to be improved, the tests you did, etc. And um, we also have a folder for pictures that we organize by months. And that is also very helpful for documentation since you know which pictures line up with each meeting based on the timestamp of when you upload it into the folder. And it's just good to have photos for reference. For our fourth tip, we highly recommend that your documenters don't solely do documenting, that they are also builders and programmers. But if that's not possible, make sure that there's strong communication between the documenters and the builders, programmers, designers, etc. Um, so the documenters should be asking for clarification questions to make sure that the summary is accurate and um, that way the meeting actually benefits everyone as a whole because you know they have the technical specifications and things like that that aren't possible if there's no communication. Mm -hmm. And our final tip is to reach out to people for feedback and we recommend reaching out to those people who have done robotics before such as club alumni and people who don't have much experience such as like parents or just friends and it kind of helps you get both perspectives on your documentation process and they will tell you like if they understand what you're saying in the notebook. And um, it's just good to always look for feedback and try to improve your notebook. All right, to demonstrate our capabilities, we're gonna be shooting this McChicken. Ray shooting. Ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs>